Hello, uh, my name is Makoto Mori. I'm an associate editor at Jack. Uh, today we have uh, Dr. Vinay Badwar, who is a Gordon F. Murray professor and chair in the Department of Cardiovascular and Thoracic Surgery at West Virginia University School of Medicine. Uh, Dr. Badwar uh, has uh, submitted and has a manuscript accepted uh, with us that describes uh, a very important finding in the space of aortic valve uh, choices between mechanical and bioprosthetic uh, aortic valves in uh, younger patient populations. So uh, Dr. Badwar, uh, first of all, congratulations on the manuscript and this very important study. Um, could you describe to us the significance uh, of the research question in the context of existing uh, literature uh, on bioprosthetic and mechanical aortic valve replacement? Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. And um, we're very pleased that uh, Jack has decided to uh, um, launch this paper. The research that's being uh, published is a long journey on utilizing the STS National Database, which is, as you are aware, the largest clinical registry in healthcare, particularly in cardiothoracic surgery, with uh, highly validated and audited data that traditionally has been one of 30-day or in-hospital outcomes, but over the last few years, uh, it has been uh, linked to the National Death Index as well as to the CMS data set to create a longitudinal instrument for clinical follow-up using the precision of clinical registries. Um, now, while randomized controlled trials are best in class, um, probably among the second best is a large clinical registry data that can actually reflect what's going on across the country or across the world. In this question, which is the optimal prosthesis at any age class, there is excellent science that's been established, but these are largely based on claims data or state-based registry data that are also claims-based. And the findings of this study, which we'll get into, are generally congruent with institutional studies, say from the Mayo Clinic and others, that have indicated that mechanical valves um, have benefit at certain age classes. Compared to the prior literature, um, these are in the you know, single digit thousands of patients. Uh, and this paper is well over 100,000 patients with 12 year follow up. That's uh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. I think before before we get into the paper, I think you've alluded to this important point about randomized control trial. Obviously, is the the best evidence. Why is it so difficult to conduct a trial in this space? Um, and, and certainly, that ele elevates the significance of, of your study as as probably one of the best in class in this uh, field. Yeah, that's a good question. Of course, um, we all uh, covet uh, the science that comes from. Uh, randomized clinical trials, and that, of course, um, is costly, time-consuming, but also has its own challenges in terms of equipoise, randomization, uh, enrollment, and time. Uh, oftentimes, to create a 10-year follow-up study on a question such as this one, uh, looking at the optimal aortic pile prosthesis, which has interpretive um, uh, benefit to uh, other areas and other types of prostheses in the aortic position um, will take a very long time and a lot of resources to accomplish it. And this way, this is the way that uh, we'll be able to do these analyses and get interpretive science that can give inferences that might help clinical practice. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, now, getting into the study, um, what is the exact uh, population the age group um, that you've studied, and uh, could you describe the main finding of your study? Well, thank you. Uh, so the aim of this study, initially, um, it looked at all patients at any age range. But after looking at this data, um, we wanted to really make sure that it was statistically um, bulletproof, as we say, as uh, you and the other editors of Jack made sure, uh, but then focus it on a subpopulation that is most germane to clinical practice. Of course, patients over the age of 80 
uh, or under the age of uh, 40, uh, we I think there is um, really not an equipoise of what the best option would be. Um, but in the age range studied, uh, essentially between the ages of 40 and 75, that we wanted to um, really look at that question much more specifically. And in so doing, the primary finding, of course, this is highly risk adjusted, um, looking at the entire STS database uh, with its, all of its multiple variables, uh, with doubly robust um, inverse probability weighting, uh, propensity matching, and looking at the, the multiple different uh, sub-analyses. The, the summary high-level finding was that essentially starting at age 65, but where between 60 and 65, there may be uh, some equipoise uh, where the mean finding was, but the lower bound of the confidence element was age 60 and younger. There was a clear survival benefit to patients um, receiving a mechanical valve in the aortic position. And again, this was isolated aortic valve operations uh, performed uh, over the last uh, essentially 12 years. Thank you. Um, so given this finding, I, one of the other aspects of the data you presented that I found striking was the declining trend of mechanical valve use over time. You reported uh, from 20% down to 10% uh, in the matter in the course of the last decade, um, which is, is interesting in, in the context of uh, some other observational studies, claims that that you alluded to have shown some benefit to the aortic valve replacement mechanical AVR in, in that age group. So um, I think this your paper does take this evidence to a whole new level by using this uh, SDSA, CSD linked to NDI and uh, with rigorous statistical methodologies. Um, how, what should surgeons and cardiologists be taking away from uh, this study? Well, that's an excellent question, of course. The inference from this is with the clear association of survival benefit, um, you know, the, the evidence to support tissue valves in all patients and the concept of lifetime management that has been promulgated uh, is essentially based on an equivocal study based on claims-based um, information that showed there may be no difference. Um, of course, that's um, approximately 6,000 patients. Um, there's some state evidence, as we mentioned, but it's also largely experiential that um, surgeons say, well, I've Put a tissue valve in the patients do fine and we follow them at a year and they do fine but aortic valve treatment is a lifelong journey for patients uh, much like coronary treatment is and anything we do in cardiac care um, and so the concept of putting a tissue valve in a young patient and then do uh, potential transcatheter intervention, and then potentially a reoperation to avoid the liabilities of warfarin. I mean, the concepts, concepts of that um, are appealing, uh, both to the provider and most importantly, to patients. But I mean, to, to be blunt, if the patients need to be alive to be able to benefit from the um, re-intervention or the lifetime solutions. And so the question arose, from the embrace of bioprostheses um, in the aortic position, be it surgical or transcatheter, and the trend of that ac across the country, particularly in lower age patients not otherwise studied in randomized clinical trials. And therefore, with this finding, uh, we would posit that surgeons and cardiologists may have a little bit of pause before recommending a biological solution for patients age 60 or younger. Thank you. And uh, kind of building on that, um, you know, currently there is some data that are emerging about TAVR use in uh, younger patients that is increasing in trend, and these are shown in larger uh, registry data. Um, 
in terms of the the mechanical valve is currently only available uh, in a form that uh, must be surgically implanted, but there are less invasive options to implant this as well. Um, mini AVR or uh, robotic AVR, which is your expertise. Um, could you describe uh, what those approaches may play a role uh, sort of given the finding of this study? Well, that's an excellent but multi-part question. I will try to answer them both in, in turn. So first, you know, as um, some of your readers may know, I'm a large and big advocate for transcatheter therapy, um, be it transcatheter AVR, transcatheter uh, mitral or tricuspid. Um, however, I think uh, personally, I and those of us that uh, have committed ourselves to the science of this space, uh, also have to advocate for our patients and uh, follow the best evidence no matter where it guides us, be it transcatheter or otherwise. The randomized trials in this space are practice changing and have been practice changing. And um, I think TAVR is an absolutely spectacular solution for the right patient at the right time. Because we can do it, in the absence of a randomized evidence, um, the question should be asked, should we do it? And the embrace of um, low risk since 2019's FDA approval, um, as you know, that, that trial, uh, the mean age was 73, um, but the embrace or uh, in extrapolation of its implantation in younger patients is not really steeped in evidence. And in recent California data and other trends, as you refer to, that that is, um, um, it raises eyebrows on its appropriateness. Um, now, of course, if the patient is of prohibitive risk or extreme, and I've, you know, we've all had these discussions of certain patients that may be younger, but have a physiologic age that is limited. Of course, that's appropriate and all care evidence aside, still is personalized between the provider and the patient based on their individual patient characteristics. This study only adds to that so that the provider might interpret choice. Um, if a tissue valve in a patient younger than the age of 60 has lower survival projections, then perhaps uh, one should have pause in putting any transcatheter aortic valve um, in the same thing as it is a bioprosthesis. And from other evidence that shows that the explantation rate of transcatheter valves is on an exponential rise, uh, these are largely in younger patients. And so the, the two pieces of evidence, albeit this paper did not study to be very specific, um, transcatheter therapy. Your question is an interesting one, and it, this may have some inferential relevance. Now, the second part of your question, I think, is an important one. That is the surgical implantation rate. Clearly, our field has moved on and our patients have moved on from the desire to have a sternotomy when alternatives are possible, hence the embrace of our previous um, line of questioning. So I think it's incumbent upon surgeons um, to evolve to attempt to do these minimally invasive as opposed to a sternotomy when appropriate and based on experience in the center, at, which is obviously heart team based between cardiology and cardiac surgery. But in that experience, if it is possible, then minimally invasive and potentially one day robotic uh, aortic valve replacement, uh, including mechanical valves, is indeed possible. As you have noted, um, our experience in robotic AVR is now global, and it's uh, over 350 patients and going, and we have one-year data that is uh, showing excellent outcomes. Uh, so, uh, But we're not quite there yet for a international complete embrace of robotic AVR, but minimally invasive AVR has uh, been accepted all around the world uh, through different modalities. I see. Thank you very much. Um, 
Yeah, certainly a uh, very interesting era um, for the aortic valve replacement therapies. And I think uh, this evidence, the, the data manuscript you presented is, uh, is going to be a, a landmark paper in this space, I believe. So congratulations. And uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us again, Dr. Badwar. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. Appreciate being here.